Hey guys, once again, welcome back to Swartz Tools. So today we are going to start our Hulkbuster look development. And in this tutorial, I'm going to build the shader from scratch once again, so that you can understand the process of procedural texture creation better. And I'll be explaining my process of texturing in detail so that even beginners can understand it clearly. We are not going to use UVs for this tutorial. We are using a method called triplanar projection for all our procedural nodes so that we wouldn't get into problems like seams and we can avoid the trouble of UV unwrapping. So even people who have no knowledge of UV mapping can easily do look developments for their assets. We'll be using vertex color maps which can be painted inside Maya and stored in the mesh itself for masks. This is a cool method for creating masks as we are not using UVs. I'll explain the pros and cons of it, where it can be used and where it cannot. Then I'll be covering the importance of collecting references, how it will improve our output quality. And when we get into texturing, I'll explain how to create base diffuse color, roughness maps, bump displacement maps, etc. We'll create the base color first, then we'll be reusing the same procedural nodes to create the rest of the maps like roughness or bumps. I'll be explaining how you should look at the texture references and understand the texture breakups and layering. Some of my approaches are also adapted from texturing softwares. So for anyone who is also interested and want to learn some texture softwares in the future, these methods will be helpful. For a faster workflow, we'll be doing the look development using a single shader for the whole parts of Hulkbuster. We'll be using a layered shader to create separate shaders for each surface imperfections so that we'll have separate control over each imperfection. And since it's expected to be a really long tutorial, I'll be covering each parts in separate videos. And finally, the lighting setup that we are going to use is a symbol light rig that I've created for look development with symbol area lights. So if you want to know more about the rig, check out my other tutorial creating a look development rig with area lights. So let's start. And before going inside Maya, I want to talk about the importance of reference. Why you should always work with references. First and most important thing is because our brain does not remember all the things it sees, especially the smaller details or maybe something that is unique to an object. I want you to imagine a glass. So which glass will you imagine? One made of glass or steel or a ceramic glass? Is it new? Is it old? How is its texture? How much reflective it is? Is there any scratches or cracks? So all these details, our brain can't preserve just in a glance. In order to remember details in depths like this one, you will need to study objects really closer and for a longer period of time. So here, making notes of details or photographing it and using the photographs as a reference helps one to create all these details in 3D. So the first thing I always do and also wants you guys to do is collect as many references as you can. But also keep in mind that you can't spend half of the time collecting only references you should keep it in a time limit. You can collect various references for various properties. For example, you can choose one reference for the color and another for the reflection properties. So let's see what I've collected for Hulkbuster. So this is the main reference which I have used for doing the Hulkbuster look element. And you can see we can uh, get a good judgment on the details of the reflection of the color and some imperfections like scratches, dirt, smudges, so this was the main reference which I have used for the material properties and then there was another image that I have used for the reference for which parts have this red color and which parts have yellow color. So this image is an another ref uh, render I believe with the same model and if you look closely with our 3D model you can see it's the same model which is used here. So I can clearly see in this which parts have this uh, which colors and which materials are. So uh, this one was mainly used for that purpose to uh, understand which parts have which colors and properties. So uh, talking about material properties, every material will have a base color or base material. In our case, uh, as a base material, we have three different uh, materials, which are the red color, the yellow and the iron color. So in here, you can see uh, if you see another references or even the movie, uh, this model is from the movie Age of Ultron. If you watch the fight sequence of Hulkbuster in the movie, you can see uh, mostly the yellow parts are made of uh, gold, like it is a metallic yellow color. And this part, the red part is more painted metal. So 
uh, we can treat the red part as dielectric and we should treat the yellow part as metallic and also there are a lot of iron parts uh, which is not painted or any tinted colors which is pure iron color or even steel maybe so we uh, we have three different materials and uh, since we are using a single shader for the whole Hulkbuster parts, we'll be differentiating this material through masks. So uh, for masks, we are going to use vertex colors. We'll be creating three different colors as a vertex color in each geometry. Let's say we will be painting blue color for the red parts, uh, green color for the yellow parts and red color for the white iron parts. We can paint all these three colors in a single vertex color set so that we can shuffle it into red, green and blue channels and use it as a mask in the shader. So I'll be talking more about vertex colors uh, soon in this tutorial and let's continue with the study of the reference. So that's our three main material. So this is our base material. This is the uh, material which will be created if it is a if it is a fresh model what we are seeing here is not a fresh model it is a very uh, used it has a lot of scratches and dirt in the model so we'll be using different shaders for creating these uh, scratches and dirt and we'll be adding uh, it on top of the base shader using a layer shader so the imperfections are layered on top of the base shader so there will be an order if you think it physically there is always an order for the imperfections so you can see this is a painted metal so before painting it as red it will have a color which will usually be if you see on the scratch parts it is white or this uh, maybe it is this white iron part which is painted red so uh, actually the base part of that red metals are iron and on top of that we are painting it as red then when some scratches happen the metallic part inside it gets visible through the scratches uh, we are not going to create a white part first as a base how we are going to create this shader is we will be creating uh, the red and yellow parts as the base colors and then on top of that we will be adding the scratch shader which will be in the iron color and after scratch or Together with the scratch, there will be some edge wearings happening. So if you see mostly on the edges, there will be some uh, paints which are uh, gone from mostly the edge, edge parts because edges are tend to lose paints faster than any other part. Even though the scratches and edge wears comes together in a single shader, we can create it even in a single shader but we'll try to differentiate or separate it in, in two different shaders with the same uh, metallic properties so that we get uh, separate controls for the edge wears and the scratches. And uh, finally, on top of the scratches, we get the dust or dirt. So for the dirt also, we will be creating a separate shader so that we get control for that shader separate. So this will be our initial planning when we collect the references we will be judging uh, what kind of uh, details we are going to add what kind of materials we are going to create and uh, what are all the details we want to add onto that particular object this is all the uh, things we plan when we collect references so that is why collecting references or working with references are so important so now we have seen the reference and our planning so now let's talk about the vertex paint in maya Vertex Paint tool is a cool and easy way to create masks inside Maya. Most of the softwares will have a paint tool to paint vertex colors into the geometry and render engines will have respective nodes to call the vertex colors into its shaders. The advantage of vertex color is you don't need to save it as a texture map. It's saved in vertex points of the geometry. So vertices for vertex colors are like pixels for a photograph. The more pixels you have, the more resolution and quality an image has. Same way as the number of vertices increases, it gives smoother maps. Otherwise, it will give jagged edges. So if you want a mask to assign two separate shaders to a single geometry, you can use this one. But if the geometry has very less poly count, you won't get a smooth transitional mask because it will have a lower vertex resolution. So this is a disadvantage of vertex colors. 
Vertex colors are saved as color sets in the geometry. You can create multiple color sets for multiple masks in a single geometry. Also, you can paint multiple colors in a single vertex color set. It is advisable to use primary colors only, that is red, green, and blue in a single color set as they are easy to separate into different masks just by extracting red, green, and blue channels of the set. Since no single object possesses two different colors in the geometry, we won't be needing more resolution on the vertices. We'll be painting single geometries in single colors. So this method is not the one which is widely used in production for creating masks because its quality depends on the vertex numbers. But in rare cases such as here, we can get away with this one. So we have imported the model here. This is a free model from free3d.com. You can check this out. I have put the link in the description. You can simply download it and use it the FBX file format inside Maya. So by default, it comes with all the joins and everything. We don't need all of this. So to remove all this and clean the mesh or clean the outliner, what you can do easily is go to the show menu on the viewport and select none. Then again, show only polygons. Select all of the polygons together and press shift and P. It will extract all the objects from all the joints and groups and you can just press Ctrl G and group it together and you can name it Hulkbuster. Then you can delete all the other things from our Maya scene. We don't need all of that. So if you check the mesh, you can see some of the meshes are all combined together. Some of them are separate and some of them are combined. Let's like if you see the, uh, the face here, if you isolate it by clicking this icon, you can see this is a lot of different meshes which are combined together using the combine option. So even if it is combined, if you go to the face component mode and if you double click any of the mesh, you can see which objects are individual in this uh, combined mesh. So on the face component selection, you will get individual selection on each mesh which are combined together. So this is uh, going to be useful for us when we want to when we want to create vertex colors on this mesh and we want to separate the colors. So uh, let's get into paint vertex colors here. So before doing the paint vertex, what we should do is and what I am going to show in this one mesh is the same thing which we are going to repeat for all the other mesh. So. Uh, I'm not going to spend time on creating vertex color on each mesh that is going to take like a day. So I'm going to show you uh, how we are going to create a vertex color in one mesh and that you can repeat on all the other mesh. So uh, back to the head again. First thing we have to do is come to the shape node of that particular geometry and then go to the Arnold tab. Click on the export vertex colors tab. If you don't tick mark the export vertex colors, it won't get read into the shader. So now what we can do is go to the mesh display and go to the color set editor. So by default, if you see the color set editor, it is blank because there is no color sets are defined or created here. So like I said, vertex colors are saved in color sets. So if you come to the mesh display and click on the paint vertex color tool, go to these. This is the settings for the paint vertex color. You can select any color and you can just paint it on top of the mesh. So if you select the mesh again, you can see when we paint some color on the mesh using paint vertex color tool, it by default creates a color set. We can uh, rename it like RGB underscore mask. Uh, when we rename this one, make sure that you name it something that you can remember because this name is what will be given into the shader so that uh, the vertex color set can be read into the shader. So you can delete this one so that our paint vertex color set is got deleted and the colors are also gone from the geometry. So you can create a blank uh, color set also and you can again rename it as RGB mask. So make sure once you rename it as RGB mask or RGB color, make sure you are using the same name 
for the other geometries also so if you want to create the same uh, rgb mask for this particular geometry we have to create a new geometry here uh, new color set sorry we have to create a new color set here and rename it as as same as rgb underscore mask so that when we are calling the color set to that uh, shader it will be red from all the geometries together so if you rename it as like rgb mask 2 it won't get called so make sure you rename the color set similarly for all the geometries so let's just delete this one for from the chest part let's come back to the head and we have a color set here we have our so you can get the paint vertex tool from mesh display and paint vertex color tool so now before we paint we have to know which part of the head are in red which part of them are in blue so we have to again use the reference for that so if you see here on the reference the front these much of parts are only in yellow color so i am going to paint the yellow part in red so uh, for the easy thing if you see uh, if i paint it straight all the parts are getting painted right so to avoid this what i am going to do i'm going to isolate all the yellow parts so that i can only paint it on them so i'm just going to flood the whole head in black so also if if it is a single mesh uh, here we have all the different uh, colors in the in a single mesh that's why we have to do all this isolation and everything uh, for this particular head if you have a single mesh like this head is all red or all yellow you can just uh, straight away use the paint vertex color tool and select a color and you can click on flood and it will flood the whole mesh in a single color but we have to be selective in this because some parts are red and some parts are yellow so that's why we are going to use the selection for this so what i'm going to do here is i'm going to face component mode and i'm going to select which of the parts are in yellow so i'm just double clicking on the mesh so that it selects the whole mesh and yeah i guess we have selected all the parts which are yellow so now what i'm going to do is i'm going to isolate these parts so we have a selection or isolation which has only the parts which are in yellow so uh, like we said we are we were planning to do the yellow parts as red and the red part as blue right so we already have the yellow part in red vertex colors so we can paint all the other parts in blue so for that what we can do is press shift and click and drag so that the selection gets inverted so all the meshes which were not selected got selected and we have to remove the uh, eyes from this one because we are not going to use eyes so we can use the isolation here and now we can go to mesh display paint vertex color we can select a blue color and you can click on flood so if you come back from isolation only the parts which were isolated gets the color so this is the same thing which we can do if we want to uh, you know paint it in another color let's say if we want to paint the uh, red parts in green you can isolate all these parts and come to mesh display paint vertex color so that file got crashed and we are again on level zero so like i said just a repetition Go to the Arnold, export vertex colors, go to mesh display, go to color set editor, create a new color set, and rename it as, rename it whatever you want. I'm just going to rename it as the RGB mask. So what you have to remember is you have to maintain this name for all the other geometries. 
so now we are going to select all the parts which are coming in yellow and we are isolating the parts and now go to mesh display paint vertex color tool if the tool settings doesn't come uh, you can click on this button and it will uh, bring the tool settings so select a color and create flat so only that meshes are getting affected so uh, if if you can't see the paint vertex colors when you paint it's maybe because of the mesh component display options so make sure you have this display colors option checked on if it is not the vertex colors won't be visible on the viewport so if it is not getting visible on the viewport maybe you have turned this option off or it it came uh, by default off so make sure you turn on the display color you can uh, put this one on none which will remove the lambert shader properties from the viewport but you can keep it as it is so we have the selection of a red on the yellow now we have to paint the other parts on blue so for that i am going to select the uh, red parts or sorry yellow parts again and i'm going to invert the selection so for creating the uh, vertex colors for the whole geometry is a long time taking process i took a day or two for the whole character and that was the lengthiest process for the look element but uh, you can enjoy this process it's very fun i really enjoy this kind of process so i'm going to invert the selection by uh, holding shift and clicking and dragging on the whole mesh so the selection got inverted i'm coming back from the isolation and going again into the isolation so we have uh, a selection a small selections of uh, metal parts and also the eye the eye and the chest part and some parts on the knee and the elbow are emissive we can see some kind of light is getting uh, emitted from those parts from the eyes also so we are going to create another color set only for the emissive parts so we will have to uh, either leave it as non-color uh, painted nothing onto it or you can paint it black so that it won't come in any of the vertex color when we shuffle it into rgb masks so we can remove this ones also from the selection and again do a isolation so that we get only the rest of the parts in isolation now go again to the paint vertex tool and now this time we are going to select another color so the reason uh, i have already explained the reason why i am using the primary rgb colors because it is easy for us to shuffle it from red green blue channels for the masks so that's the reason i'm using only the red green and blue colors so i'm again uh, flooding the geometry so this is our mesh so uh, likewise if you select any other mesh uh, we'll be painting red parts in blue the yellow parts in red and the metal parts which are like these parts in here or these parts or the chest part which is in iron so this one will be painting in green so i hope you understood how to create a vertex color paint or vertex color sets inside maya so let's see how the final out of this one looks so this is our final color sets after painting the whole geometry uh, using vertex paint and you can see if i select all the geometries you can see in the color set editor the name of each set is uh, same so that we get a single mask for all the geometry together in a single shader so that's the purpose of this color set editor and if you select the rgb second mask rgb2 underscore mask you can see it's only for the uh, emissive parts that is i the chest part and the back uh, emissive parts etc so 
if I select this one and go to the RGB2 mask, you can see it's a it's a black and white mask because unlike the first mask, we don't have uh, three different colors. We don't need three different colors to uh, define uh, these properties because it's all the same single uh, property, which is emission. So that's why we have two different masks here. So that's the final uh, color set for the object. So this is only for viewing in the viewport. If you assign a simple Lambert shader, you can see it's assigned a Lambert shader with white color, but still you can see uh, it's not changing any because we have turned on the display colors for this one. So if you turn off the display color, it's gone. So if you create any symbol light, let's say sky dome and if you render this geometry you can see what we you are seeing is a flat gray color which is coming from the Lambert shader so this is only for viewing and if you want to create or if you want to add this mask into the shader if you want to call the mask into the shader what you can do is you do it with the with the node called AI user data color. So I am going to connect this user data color into the color of the Lambert shader and I'm gonna add the attribute as RGB underscore mask. Remember this is the name which we have added as the name of the color set. So now if I render you can see that color set is being added into the color. So this is how we paint and call the vertex colors into a shader. So I'm winding up the part one of the tutorial here. In the next part, we'll cover the base shader creation. So let me know what you think of this video in the comments and subscribe the channel for more future videos. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.